And good evening and welcome to the third and final in a series of municipal candidates uh, forums hosted, uh, or presented, I should say, by the Yarmouth and Area Chamber of Commerce and our two sponsors. We also want to thank the Nova Scotia Association of Realtors and the Yarmouth Rotary Club. This evening, the town of Yarmouth, we have candidates for council and we have uh, some of the candidates uh, for the seat of mayor. So we've got a full house this evening and uh, Quinn has already explained uh, the rules, so uh, I guess we can, uh, we can proceed. Thank you, Gary. So just to give everybody on the, uh, on the live stream an idea of the format, it's going to be the same as what we have for the other forums, but in case you missed it, uh, the candidates will have one minute to introduce themselves. We're going to go around the room in order. Uh, then we'll have three questions. They'll have one minute for each response as we uh, select who will answer. It'll be in a random order for each question. It won't be the same order for every question. Uh, and then at the end, we'll, we have a fourth question, but it's strictly for the mayoral candidates as well. Uh, so it'll be fairly short at the end. And then we'll have one minute to close out for each of the candidates, and we'll go in reverse order around the room and hit on everybody else, and that'll be the end of this evening. As well, if you know anybody who may not have access to the Facebook or the YouTube channel uh, streams online to watch the forums, please let them know that Eastlink Community TV will be airing all three forums on October the 10th, Saturday, October the 10th, on Channel 10 in the Tri-Counties. The Municipality of Yarmouth will air at 1. The Municipality of Argyle will air at 3.30. And the Town of Yarmouth will air at 5 p.m. So with that, I think we're ready to go. Please, candidates as well, don't forget to pick up your microphones and speak into it so that everybody on the live stream uh, can hear you. So we'll start with introductions. And we'll start with Don Barry. Hello, I'm, hello, I'm Don Barry. Uh, I'd like to be reelected. Uh, I have four years experience on town council, born and raised in Yarmouth, teacher, administrator, 40 years. I'm in my 40th year of education at this particular moment. I'm a leader, dedicated, hard worker, good listener, honest, gold setter, and sees things through to the end, whether positive or negative have participated provincially and locally on committees across the province. I'm proud to be from Yarmouth and proud of our surrounding area. Many things we have accomplished. Some things were hard issues that we took on, whether it came out positive or negative, I was still on board with it. We have worked with our other districts and have to find a better way to support each other moving forward. I believe I have served you well and I have learned many things and would like to see things to the finish line. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. First of all, I'd just like to say thank you to the Chamber for putting us on, for giving us the opportunity to uh, allow the public to see what we're all about. And also thank you to all 18 candidates and the mayor candidates. I believe no matter who's chosen that we have a good bunch in here and we all have something to offer. Uh, my name is Steve Barry, and I'm very happy to be reoffering for town council. Uh, in May of 2019, the citizens uh, voted to overwhelmingly to support me in becoming a councillor. Since then, I have worked hard to fulfill my election promises and to be active in our community. I'm once again asking for your support in the upcoming election. A sense of pride from where I'm from is something I've always had. A proud hometown boy who's willing to do what's needed is what your vote will get you if you vote for me. Working together as a team with those people around the table tonight, with lo other local governments and governments, both provincially and federally, to allow our, our region to prosper is something that I believe in. I believe we all need to work hard to make our town a better place to be, and I look forward to working together to improve Yarmouth. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Byron Boudreaux. Good evening, and uh, thank you for the chamber as well as the candidates. My name is Byron Work Boudreaux. I, uh, I've been in business for 46 years, and I am a citizen of the town of Yarmouth. I've lived here all my life. Um, I am a Knights of Columbus member for over 30 years. I am a big supporter of the Hope Center, uh, Yakro, and the uh, Hospital Foundation. I've been uh, on council for three terms, and the last two terms that I was on council, I was deputy mayor, and I served on various committees. Uh, I enjoyed, I'm a team player, and uh, I want to see the town grow. I'd like to see the town even uh, fulfill its needs. 
because some of these things that are going on right now uh, have to be changed. And with support that knows municipal council, uh, I would like to take this time and ask the people to vote me back in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Byron. Go ahead. Uh, hello, um, Timothy Clayton, uh, born and raised here in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Um, mother, Elaine Babin from Eelbrook area, comes with uh, Aboriginal and Acadian ties. Uh, my father, and I'm sure everybody, the Clayton family know that uh, Stan Clayton, Marge Clayton, and my father Dave have been uh, running the arena here in town for almost 50 years. Um, I've learned a lot watching them over the years. Um, see, I've been a very sports-oriented person my whole life, uh, representing Yarmouth and Nova Scotia on the national and provincial stage uh, many times. Um, I say I was able to play for the Mariners, played Canada Games baseball, representing Nova Scotia. I uh, moved to Alberta in 2006, um, was a carpenter after uh, my time with the Mariners. Um, wasn't any work here, so I moved out west, moved back in 2013, started lobster fishing. Um, I'm here to do what's best for everyone and uh, work together and reach a common goal. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Wade. Hey, everybody. I'm Wade Cleveland. I think most people know who I am. Um, I'm running for re-election. It's my first term that just came up, four years. It's a big learning curve. It really is. And to anyone new who's running, who hopes to become elected, there is a big learning curve involved. Um, I have a lot of integrity. I think I have a reputation for that. I have a vision of what I think the town should be. And I have a reputation as being a team player, a guy who works with everybody and is willing to. And I am. I'm, I'm a person with a, an open mind. I'm willing to listen to both sides, to think from there and decide for myself whatever that situation might be. Um, at the same time, I have uh, a reputation for voting nay. I've voted nay probably more times than anyone else on uh, council this time through. And I'm a hard worker. I've worked very hard for this council. I was chair of the Communities in Bloom, led the team that hosted the world. A couple of other people are on that stage. I'm chair of the Yarmouth and Acadian Shores Tourism, Tourism Association, and right now working with the Mariner Center to try to get that vision through. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Good evening. My name's Gil Dares. i first like to thank the uh, Chamber of Commerce for um, hosting this event this evening. For the past 36 years, more than half my life, I've lived in Yarmouth, and, and I've always stepped up whenever I saw a need. From recreation to education, literacy, to mental health, civic pride, youth programs, the list goes on. I've never refused a challenge, and my commitment is always long-term. I want Yarmouth to be the very best place it can be to live, work, and play. A place where young families and seniors alike enjoy the opportunities and the activities that make a community. I hold great optimism for our future, but there are still challenges ahead, and I know that I can make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Brandon Gates. I was born, I was uh, raised in Argyle, and I'm the delivery driver for Mrs. Dunster's Donuts and Snares Bread. Uh, I moved away in my 20s from Yarmouth because there, there was no opportunities here. So I understand what well, many of our youth and young people know that there is not much in Yarmouth for ma many of them. Uh, I've lived in northern BC, northern Alberta, Vancouver, Edmonton, Toronto. So I know that there's a lot of opportunities for youth out there and that there's a lot of things that Yarmouth doesn't offer people. I've seen a lot of things in a lot of towns that have lost a lot of population and we are in a population decline, so we really have to do a lot of things to bring change to Yarmouth and bring us to a place where we can increase our tax base. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Hello, uh, my name is Murray Goodwin. I was born and raised in Yarmouth. My wife was born and raised in Yarmouth. We've raised four daughters here. They, they call Yarmouth their home. I served eight years on municipal council uh, four of those is warden, three is deputy warden. I, uh, I want to see my grandchildren call Yarmouth home. I think I can use my experience for the benefit of the town, and uh, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Heather Hatfield, 
and I grew up in Pembroke, just outside of the town of Yarmouth, but I have spent the last 40 years living in the town. I have two daughters, Megan and Kelty, and they both live and work in the town of Yarmouth. I'm a retired registered nurse, and I spent most of my career working in mental health and addictions, uh, and also uh, was the nurse manager and the CEO of Harborside Lodge for over 10 years. I sat on several committees within the town of, of, the, of Yarmouth, Communities in Bloom, Doug Melanson Park, Milton Improvement Society, and Harborfront Museum. I've always had a passion for moving the community forward and helping to build a vibrant place for us all to live. And now I am hoping to have a seat at the council table with a goal of building a better tomorrow for us all. Thank you. Charles? Hello, I'm Charles Crosby. I've got 37 years experience on council. I served 20 years as mayor, 17 as a councillor. I've served on the Nova Scotia uh, municipalities. I was president of the association. I also served on the federal FCM. Matter of fact, uh, I was asked to stay on after I was defeated in the election because I was in interested in working with the RCMP budget. So I stayed on an extra five months to help with that contract. I know Yarmouth. I've lived here all my life. I think the people of Yarmouth know who I am. And when, when I say something, I mean it. It's the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, fellow candidates, and a warm hello to everybody who's watching online. I'm Pam Mood. I'm a Yarmouth girl who, like most of you, could have chosen anywhere in the world to live and work, but nothing beats the quality of life and the people right here. Yarmouth is home. I have three children who really don't like to be mentioned, and I'm a brand new Grammy. I spent 18 years with the RCMP, and I own Pam Mood Consulting. Uh, and as a leadership expert, I do keynotes and sessions throughout North America to help businesses grow. For the past eight years, it's been, it's been a privilege, that's an understatement, to serve as your mayor. I took on the work of getting Yarmouth back on the map. If decisions are being made by other levels of government that affect our future, we need to be at the table, and I am. I'm the president of the Federation of Nova Scotia Municipalities, and I sit on the board of the Canadian Federation as well, where we work uh, with the federal and provincial governments for the needs of the community. I know the value of a dollar, and I love the challenge of getting the most for our money because I know how hard we work for every penny. We're the most resilient community I know. No matter what's thrown at us, we come together and we fix it. The future is ours, and I think it's bright. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Good evening. My name's Angie Romard, and I'm running for a seat as mayor. I opted to run for mayor for several reasons. I and the public become aware of the major issues in Yarmouth. I feel the voters' opinions and views are forgotten and I want to change that. I have great ideas and they have great ideas as well. I want to be heard and I would like these ideas from them to be heard as well. I believe that if you don't like what you see or hear, you should be proactive. My personal strengths I will bring with me to council table are life experience with optimism, and initiative. I possess excellent communication skills and have the ability to and recognize the importance of being accessible and friendly to my residents as well as my colleagues. I, I am genuinely, genuinely concerned and I offer a listening ear. I am not from an elite, elitist background so I can appreciate the need for an average Joe to step up and represent the majority of our voting population. I am proactive and believe that to be an important, that is an important strength that is needed to hold a mayoral seat. I want to participate in the planning and be involved in Yarmouth. I'm going to get you to wrap up on that, Angie. You're over time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There's no switch on it, Cliff. It's okay. Is there a switch? Or? No, no switch. Just hold it in front of you and you're good. So I'm Clifford Hood and... Um, I've been elected as a Yarmouth Town Councillor through numerous elections beginning in 1982, most recently elected in 2016. Currently, I'm carrying eight committees. Uh, this has been the best council I've ever served on, bar none. 
I support the mayor when I ran. I'm supporting her now. I'm, I'm a senior lawyer at Hood Fraser Dontremont, a business I created in 1972. I also was a senior commercial pilot, completed engineering at Dalhousie University and graduated from Dalhousie 50 years ago with a law degree. I worked as an engineering technician and surveyor, commercial pilot, instructor, and a lawyer in Halifax before setting up my practice in Yarmouth and Shelburne, and I began my career as a local municipal politician as a town solicitor for the town of Yarmouth. So that's who I am. Thank you. Mark Hubbard. Hi, my name is Mark. The reason I paused before giving you my last name is because some people don't know my last name. Some know me as Mark from Runner's Attic, Mark from Dragon Boats, Mark from Lake Milo. Some know me as Mark from Trivia, Mark from Karaoke, or Mark from Run Club. Once my entire name importantly changed to Elliot's dad. My last name is Hubbard. I grew up in Hubbard's Point in the municipality of Argyle. I went to two French schools, Oui, je peux parler français. After graduating from St. Andrew Rousseau, I graduated NSCC Burridge campus and went directly to work in the retail trade to work downtown 33 years ago, and I'm downtown again. I've lived in town for 20 plus years, and I love my community. I believe government needs to serve the people. I think it's time for a truly inclusive government when elected, you will have a loud and a proud voice on Yarmouth Town Council. Elect Mark Hubbard, inclusive leadership. Thank you. Hi, my name is Derek Lesser, and I'm a community member, a former business owner, a teacher, a guidance counselor, an administrator, a volunteer, a taxpayer, a father, a grandfather, a son, and a husband, and I love our province. I grew up in the, in the municipality and spent the past 22 years living in town. I fully support an amalgamation plan that lets our area move forward towards its full potential. I have and continue to put out big ideas that any of us can promote, which can be found on my Facebook page. These include a university satellite campus here in Yarmouth, more safety for our students using crosswalk flags and digital speed signs around schools, more signage promoting our region. We need to celebrate our unique culture. We need affordable housing. We need to do more for accessibility in town we need to show we are open for business and eliminate the two-hour parking ban downtown, and we need to make Yarmouth a wellness destination. I look forward to hearing uh, from the rest of the candidates this evening. Thank you. Daniel? My name is Daniel McIsaac, and I own and operate a dance takeout kitchen. I have owned and operated small businesses in the town of Yarmouth for over many years. I also have valuable experience as town council and have served on a number of town committees. I was chair of the town transit committee at time when we saw the need for a town operated transit system. We made it happen. I have over 11 years of municipal experience. I also know the challenges in starting and running a business in Yarmouth. People who know me know I'm never afraid to speak up and say what I, what's on my, on my mind. I want to bring full transparency and openness to issues such as the Nova Scotia Ferry and Mariner Center, and all town spending taxpayers need to know where their hard-earned money goes. And I also would like to thank the Chamber for having this on tonight and the moderators. Thank you. Thank you. Neil McKenzie. Hello and good evening everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to share my ideas with you tonight. My name is Neil McKenzie and I'm running for Yarmouth Town Council. You may have seen me over the last few weeks walking around your neighborhood with my family, handing out election brochures or talking to some of you who have come out to see me. It's been great. I've been learning a lot from, from everybody. I would also like to say that your voice and what you have to say matters to me because what is important to your family is important to my family too. I've lived here for most of my life and have family and friends rooted from the north to the south of town. My job as the executive director for Yarmouth and Acadian Shores Tourism Association, or YASTA, allows me to bring a unique perspective to the table. YASTA has achieved great success by creating and maintaining strong partnerships and with businesses and all levels of government. And I can certainly speak with firsthand experience regarding issues facing residents of the town of Yarmouth, such as shortage of doctors, lack of recreation infrastructure, 
and of course our need to move forward with more green energy solutions. Thank you. Thank you. John McClellan. Uh, my name's Sean McClellan, and until recently, I was a uh, member of the CJLS family. I uh, worked there for 26 years until I just retired. A lot of people just called me the radio guy for many years. Uh, before that, I spent a year as uh, the caveman at uh, Sudsy's. Some people might remember that. <laughs> Other people are way too young. But uh, I lived here, this is the second time. I was here originally in 89-90. I've lived all over Canada and even in Europe as a military brat and a member of the military for a number of years. And uh, one thing anybody that's ever met military brats or anybody else that had to move a lot as a child, you learn how to adapt very quickly. You have to know your new neighborhood. You have to know how things get along and uh, what's going on in the area. Uh, one thing that I've learned over the years is the easiest way to get to know what's going on around here, walk around and talk to people. Go into the stores. Talk to all the people uh, that are there, and you'll find out what their concerns are. Thanks. Thank you, Sean. Jim McLeod. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Jim McLeod. I'm very proud of my family, including my wife, Dawn, and with three children, eight grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren with a fourth due in December. Didn't think that was possible. But I began working life on Main Street at Central Pharmacy, where Money Mart is today, as a 14-year-old schoolboy washing windows, sweeping sidewalks, to eventually operating what you see on Main Street today, Spears and McLeod Pharmacy. I've worked hard and enjoyed partnerships first with Art Spears and currently until retirement with Dave Colgan and perhaps the most important partnership of all with my wife Dawn for over 52 years. Most of all, I have enjoyed listening to people as customers, looking for information and or direction. Also, I have enjoyed volunteering and supporting many organizations throughout our town and county. Thank you. James Ogden. Well, first of all, I'd just like to say it's a real honor to come here tonight and speak. Uh, it's my first, my first shot at, uh, at running uh, for town council. I was going to wear my mask tonight, uh, just in case I said something stupid, then I could deny it later on. But I didn't think that was going to work. Okay, that joke didn't go over. <laughs> anyway, uh, I am a singer, songwriter, musician. Uh, I'm a uh, licensed minister as well. And over the last almost 40 years, I've worked with anybody that you can imagine, from mental health, suicide, uh, to trying to find people houses, financial dilemmas, whatever the case may be. And it's been a privilege to do that. And I really, really look forward to doing uh, help in, in Yarmouth. And basically, that's the reason why I'm running. I just want to help. I'm a helper. So anyway, I, and again, you know, I appreciate the, the opportunity. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Sit tab. Hi, my name is Sidney Tab. I've been a member of this community for about 30 years now. Born and raised, well, not born and raised in this town, but moved here because I chose this town. This town has always been a special place to me, from the clear, well, seas, things going on. Always a nice community atmosphere. Always easy to talk to anybody that you bump into. This town is very friendly, and I hope to continue the same way. But anyways, I've seen this town go through a lot of ups and downs. But over the last four years, I've seen a lot more downs. And this is why I'm considering to run. In my day, I've been a volunteer firefighter. I've been a member of the ground search and rescue, and I'm a ret retired member of the military. I know what it means to serve, and I intend to serve to the best of my ability. I may be only one voice, but I'm hoping to be your voice. Thank you. Thank you. So that concludes the initial introductions. <clears throat> we'll move on to the first question of the evening. Gary, go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, candidates. So your first question relates to the issue of affordable housing. The town of Yarmouth has a proposal on the table uh, that it is considering to convert the school property, the high school property, uh, into apartments. Now, with a couple of other properties now under the town's control, Central School and South Centennial, will the town, this is a two-part question, will the town also look for them to be made into affordable housing? And secondly, if not, then what will the town be doing to ensure additional units are being made available? And as mentioned, we'll go in random order. This has been pre-selected ahead of time. Brendan Gates, you're up first. Uh, I think it'll be a great idea to do all of them 
three properties as housing and I think affordable housing would be the best priority for for all them three properties but I also think that uh, the current properties we have we also have to think about some type of rent control because many people are working two or three jobs at McDonald's or Walmart and can barely afford to live but we also have to look at bringing in more developers as well to uh, more properties um, because there's seniors out there paying twelve hundred thirteen hundred dollars in their retirement years for uh, housing and that's when you retire you don't want to be paying a lot of money so I think we got to bring more affordable housing and them three properties would be uh, uh, at least a start anyway thanks thank you next up Neil McKenzie thank you one of the most important human needs is housing housing shapes our community and impacts our growth unfortunately the town of Yarmouth does not have enough affordable or adequate housing and lack of affordable housing is a major challenge for single parents, seniors, families, and vulnerable communities. I believe the town can help address this issue by putting pressure on higher levels of government to get affordable housing uh, projects in, the, in Yarmouth on the radar. Uh, we have land in the town of Yarmouth. We have schools that can be repurposed. And I think um, this would be a great idea to really address the problem. There are developers who are willing and, and able to make these uh, these uh, projects happen, but I think we need to have strong will and be a uh, united front when we're talking to all levels of government so that they can help make these things happen. This is not a problem that we can afford to ignore anymore, and uh, if I was elected, I would be a very passionate and, uh, and I would be committed to doing whatever we could as a council to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Wade Cleveland. All right, thank you. Um, I don't think it's unfair to say that Yarmouth has really a housing crisis at this point in many aspects. Um, we're dealing with an issue that uh, is just, it's something that needs to be taken care of at all levels of government. And here's the thing, the way the question was worded was kind of leading in that you mentioned the fact that we're trying to turn the high school into uh, apartments. We've been working on that for quite a while now and it is, it's been, a long grind because you do deal with those other levels of government and that's why you need a council and you need people who are willing to talk who are able to talk to other levels of government who can advocate and be passionate now there are many other ways that we can help the housing crisis as well planning committee I've served on planning committee for years before I actually became a counselor uh, you can encourage development um, I think this is one of those uh, issues where we kind of need an all hands on deck where we can make a plan and act on it. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Clifford Hood. It takes money. It takes money to do this. And the, can't, and the town is not capable of providing all of the money necessary. The federal government and the provincial government announced in the run up to the last federal election, both liberal, liberal governments they were, that there was a $10 million, they said, uh, new housing program going forward. Turns out it was a million bucks a year. So one million dollars available for affordable housing in the province of Nova Scotia. It's a joke. We are on the precipice, or the, we hope, to complete a project at the high school. There could be as many as 52 or 54 uh, units in total with 27 subsidized units. We have to focus on that project. We have to get that albatross off our neck and that is the first priority of any council. Nothing else counts more than that or the why. Thank you, sir. Next up, Steve Barry. Thank you. Uh, the high school has been on the table since I joined council. Um, it's something that I hoped would uh, happen right away, but as I've learned since being there, that when you work with other levels of government, things take time. Uh, I'm a doer, so that is frustrating for me, but. Um, it is on the table. We have been supporting as much as we can, and we hope to see that through. Um, as far as working with other schools to make apartments or things happen, this all depends on uh, investors and uh, who wants to come set up here. Affordable housing is needed, although the, it is a provincial issue. We must do our part to work with other levels of government to provide our citizens with qual quality places to live. If we expect our youth to stay here and raise a family, we must tackle this issue so they too can become meaningful members of society. Many people here tonight will speak on the same old thing. I think sometimes when you have a problem, you have to switch gears and do other things. I believe if we become industry friendly, 
provide more jobs, better paying jobs for our, our community. Therefore, people will be able to stay here, our tax bases will increase, and we'll be able to give our, our people here a quality place to live. I look forward to working together with other people around the table tonight to tackle this problem, and I know together we can give our citizens qual a quality place to call home. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Don Barry. It's important to say that we got to call this home. We have uh, around our communities, there's poverty, there's housing issues, and there's many other issues. I think when you first started off, you talked about the high school being converted into apartment buildings. The main objective of our town that we've been serving on at this particular moment has been that affordable housing would be three quarters of that building or at least half of it. So I, it, it's been ongoing. It's been a, uh, a government fight. It's been an ongoing issues with our partners to make this dream come true. But I don't think that it's far reaching. I think that as, as a team and as a good team that's willing to put our heart and soul into uh, everything that we do like we have in the past, that a, a, a good council can get this job done. Um, our issues are far reaching in the Yarmouth area because we're so far from Halifax or we seem like we are and nobody takes us, uh, looks us uh, seriously in the face. I think they need a really, we need to make a big stand that housing needs to be a top priority. Thank you. Next up, Mark Hubbard. The definition of municipal affairs and housing is to provide guidance with programs, grants, and funding to municipalities. The guidance that I see as a major issue or highlight is those who are living in their apartments and can't afford to leave even though the apartment is not being kept up by the landlord. I want you guys to check out Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, where food and shelter are the first step for psychological well-being. We need housing. We need good housing. I feel we must look at the buildings in Yarmouth and see where we can develop them. I see where we should maybe fix an apartment that the landlord is not fixing and put it on their taxes. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Next up, Murray Goodwin. Well, uh, I definitely agree with that there is a, a need for affordable housing. I would like to commend the council because uh, I wasn't aware of the high school, but uh, I, they have been working on it. Uh, it's, it's a challenge. Uh, the big challenge will be uh, affordable housing is a provincial and a federal. It has to have those, those funds. And uh, after COVID, I, I'm not sure what the economy will look like. I'm hoping that to kickstart the economy, the government, particularly the federal government, will inject a large sum of money into the uh, into the economy to kickstart some of these projects. And hopefully, affordable housing will be would be one of that. Uh, it definitely will be. It will continue to be a challenge, and it's a, a huge job that council will have to look at and continue to work at. Thank you. Next up, Sid Tab. Well, that's definitely the top on my mind is affordable housing. After looking around the town, because I've been looking to buy some properties, there's a lot of properties that need work. There's a lot of places that are just being run down. Any ideas that can bring housing to this town to remodel old schools, old buildings, to make it affordable for people, I am for and I will work hard to make sure that this happens. Whether it being to bug the provincial government or the federal government for money, we need to go after them just as much as we need to go after our own taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, John McClellan. One of the things I noticed when I moved back to Yarmouth from Kentville was how expensive it is to rent here. Uh, my rent from Kentville to Yarmouth went up by several hundred dollars a month when I came here, which was barely scraping by at the time. And uh, I know things have changed since then a little bit going up just a little bit here and there, but it's not just rents. We see a lot of places that are run down. We see abandoned places here that could be taken over. Uh, the school is a great idea. Um, you know, can we get a better deal for the South End School or the Central School? I don't know, but turning them into apartments would be fantastic. At the same time, we have to look at people that have a house and can't afford their uh, taxes on it. I know taxes are what pay for that 
pothole being filled and pay for the snowplow that's coming down your road. But I hear from a lot of people that are moving out to uh, the municipality of the District of Yarmouth or Argyle that are saying, I can't afford to live in Yarmouth. And we've got to look at every single aspect of what's driving them away. Thank you. Next up, Heather Hatfield. Thank you. Affordable housing is a critical component of a healthy community. All persons deserve a safe, appropriate, and comfortable and affordable living space. Unfortunately, that is not always the case in our community. I think that we are in the midst of a housing crisis, not only for affordable housing, but for, for housing of all kinds, for seniors, for people who are working, for people who are not working. Housing is an issue. The high school, uh, I think, is a wonderful idea. I think it's a wonderful idea that we are splitting it, you know, kind of half and half, so that 50% are for affordable and 50% are for perhaps people who can afford a little, to pay a, a bit more. And I think that we need to work and go in that direction where we're mixing our, our people together and people are living together in those kinds of communities rather than kind of segregating in them into to certain buildings that say this is, this is affordable housing. Um, it kind of you know, puts a, a stigma on, on the folks that have to live that way. Thank you. Thank you. Jim McLeod. Many people think the term affordable housing refers only to rental housing that is subsidized by the government. In reality, it's a broad term that can include housing provided by the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. It also includes all forms of housing tenure, rental ownership, cooperative ownership, as well as temporary and permanent housing. As chair of our planning committee, it's very important to plan for housing, including affordable housing, within our municipal boundaries. For example, the development on Jarvis Road, and there will be a new development, hopefully opposite uh, the development that's already there on Jarvis Road. Also, it's the intention of council to uh, develop the Clements Avenue right away between Stars Road and Prade Street as a collector street in order to promote more developments in this area. We, we need to work together. There's so much opportunity, and um, let's work hard together, gang, whether you're councils or not councillors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, Byron Boudreau. Thank you, Quinn. Uh, I, I know when I was on council before, uh, we, I think council put about $200,000 into uh, public housing and, uh, or affordable housing, whichever they, they call it. Uh, uh, I think it's a great idea for affordable housing, uh, providing that we can afford it. It's very simple. Uh, it's, uh, the municipal and the provincial government has to step on board. Uh, and I hopefully, you know what I mean, if I get on council, I, I can do, address that as well. Uh, there's all kinds of property right now. There's a Sunset Terrace right now, which is a big, huge building that's uh, got a beautiful, uh, um, uh, how would I put it? Uh, uh, oh, shoot. Um, they, they uh, repair all kinds of food. They, they got a beautiful, man, I couldn't believe how, how big of a, a kitchen they had. So, I mean, they've got all kinds of uh, places around here to put it, but I don't know if we can afford it. That's the big thing, and if we can, then we should be doing it. Thank you. Next up, Derek Lesser. Look, my dad, uh, Lou Lesser, taught at Yarmouth High for 30 years. Uh, many of you probably had him for Modern World Problems. I think he taught most of Yarmouth. Um, I taught there until it, it closed and moved to the new, lo new location. Um, and I hate driving by that building every day and seeing it empty. Um, we need to fill that building. And the model that's been used in Annapolis with the Annapolis Academy, um, the school looks almost identical to Yarmouth High. And the, the units there are incredible. We do need to make sure that if we build units, uh, we, we need to make sure that there's some accessible units. Uh, and Yarmouth High does have some issues around accessibility, the old Yarmouth High, uh, but they could be fixed quite easy. Uh, and we need to make sure that we have subsidized units. Um, it's, it's a shame that I have neighbors um, that are looking to buy houses and they're paying more in rent than I'm paying in my mortgage payments. Um, so 
you know, we definitely have a, a crisis here that we need to fix, and Yarmouth High is definitely a project that I would like to see uh, turn into apartments. Thank you. Next up, Timothy Clayton. Thank you. Uh, yeah, affordable housing, housing is definitely a big issue, um, especially for my generation and, as he mentioned, uh, the seniors, everybody getting paid or charged top dollar thousand dollars a month rent when they can't get a four or five hundred dollar mortgage um, and we talk about money coming from the government where does that money come from it's our money it's our tax dollars just given back to us anyway we need to look after ourselves and we need to look after our people and figure out ways we can't profit off people having a roof over their head trying to heat their homes like we need to start working better for our people doing Anyway, whatever it is we need to do, we're going to be looking at a lot of things to help our people succeed and have what they need, what they need. That's what they need. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Angie Romard. Affordable housing in Yarmouth is an issue. I have been a renter for almost 20 years here. I move almost yearly. Every time my lease runs out, I move. If it's not affordable, it's inadequate. Properties are in disarray. They're not safe. Windows, my power bills are skyrocketing because I can't afford to stay warm. So to me, that doesn't make sense here in such a small town with only so many owners, so many, so many places to live. This shouldn't be an issue. What I would like to see is some kind of plan developed with the existing homeowners of income properties to somehow implement to them to keep them up to date, to keep the repairs going, to keep them safe, to keep them so my power bills aren't four or five hundred dollars a month. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, James Ogden. I've been I've been a, uh, a renter most of my life, and I know the struggles of of renting and and uh, housing and and you know things like that. Uh, I guess what I would say is. is if I'm voted in, if you if you vote me in, I'm going to find out why uh, all these things, you know, are are the way that they are, and there's a reason. I remember I was I was uh, renting a spot one time, and my landlord just wouldn't fix anything. Our sewage backed up on us, and it was all flooding the basement, all this kind of stuff. And I called him, and I called him, and I called him, and he never called back, and he never called back. Finally, I said to him, I said, "Listen, I don't know why you're making me do this, but I'm going to tell you right now, what's going to happen is this." I'm going to call the plumber in, he's going to fix the stuff, and I'm taking it off my rent. And I'm serious. I called a guy about 12 times, and when I sent, left that message, ring, ring, oh, Mr. Ogden, you know, whatever, whatever. So there's, there's ways, you know. Sometimes people just don't want to give it to us, you know, and we got to find out how to get it and, and how to fight for it. And, and uh, you vote me in, that's what I'm going to do. Thank you. Charles Crosby. Thank you. I think there's two issues there when you talk about affordable housing. You have to look at the rent system that's in this community. In order to solve the rent system, you have to make sure people who are working, the working class people, are making the money that they should be making in order to afford to live in a, a perfect house. The governments of Canada and the government of Nova Scotia should be making the $15 an hour rule. That should be the first thing. Now, I started up in public housing. I, I lived in public housing for, I guess, five, six years. Then I got into a co-op system. The co-op system we are in is nowhere what it is today. You don't own the co-op houses you own today. All you are is paying rent to the government. My co-op house is mine. They should go back to making those co-op houses, co houses the way they used to be. That, to me, is what's wrong with here, is the cost of the rent and the people who can't afford to live in affordable housing. Thank you. Next up, Gil Dares. Thank you. Um, this has been one of the major planks in my platform. And four years ago, um, when I was running for council, I identified affordable housing is a critical issue. And four years later, nothing has improved. Um, while I commend the, uh, the project at the high school, 
We're talking 20 affordable units at best, and that's not going to come anywhere close to solving the problem that we have right now. Um, through Housing Nova Scotia, I know that there's incentives available to developers for new builds. There's also incentives for um, revitalization of existing uh, buildings, of some, some derelict buildings or some that are run down. But it, it's going to require an action plan, a robust action plan by the, by the town. Uh, I think um, if we look at what they've done in HRM, that's exactly what they did. They, they developed an action plan to address the problem. And I think that's what we need to do because four years is an awful long time. And I, I would hate to see this problem be ignored. Thank you. Thank you. Pam Mood. Thank you. Affordable housing is huge. We all know that. Nobody needs a study or anything else to tell any of us how important it is and how much we more we need. 54% of the housing units in town are rentals, and 43% of town people live in affordable housing, and yet we need more. The, the good news is, and, and let me say this, it is a provincial mandate. The problem is if the provincial and the federal governments won't pick it up, then it's left to us, and it's left to the community um, the community expectations, and there's only so many tax dollars to go around. But the good news is, as everybody said, that the town is in a purchase and sale agreement with the old high school uh, to put 55 units in. Half of those will be affordable housing. Um, if you check out Ocean Breeze and Jarvis Road, those are all mixed. We don't need all affordable. We need mixed. So nobody feels marginalized. It's just all affordable. There's 40 more units going in uh, around the Jarvis area. And just this afternoon, the mayor's task team met to further the housing issue. It's, it's on our agenda. I work with the province every single day on the housing file because I know how important it is. And between that, the council work and the task team work, there's more on the way. Everybody deserves a safe, affordable place to haul home, and we're making it happen. Thank you. And last up for this question, Danny McIsaac. I was on town council when the provincial government turned over the old Yarmouth High School onto the town. At that time, we passed a motion to turn the old high school into an affordable housing with room for businesses opportunities. This site has space for 55 housing units, as the mayor just said. I don't know why something hasn't happened yet. Town council gets bogged down. We need the town to press the provincial department of housing to act on this issue, not just more talk. We need housing. When I was on council, we took a strong stand against landlords who operated substandard rentals. We even closed down housing units that were unhealthy and unsafe. Nobody deserves to live like that. When I was on council, I supported more money for seniors by increasing the low income tax subsidy and voted to keep residential and provincial, excuse me, residential and property taxes low. Families and businesses struggle with high costs of living and the high cost of good housing. It doesn't have to be that way. My main concern always been the taxpayer. I will fight to make sure the town is providing the services we need at the price taxpayers can afford, and that includes affordable housing. Thank you. That concludes question number one. Uh, we're going to move on to question number two on infrastructure. Go ahead, Gary. Thank you very much, Quinn. So with the YMCA in Yarmouth now closed, the Mariner's Center expansion has become even more of a priority uh, in the minds of many residents. So questions, two part. First of all, what infrastructure investments do you see as a priority for the town of Yarmouth? And secondly, what sort of timeline makes sense? Thank you, Gary. And again, we're going to go in a random order. It's not the same as, uh, as last question. So first up, Sid Tab. Well, we definitely need some stuff. With the Y closing, we have a pool that, you know, needs to be maintained in order to in order to get it back into use. Uh, I've been hearing of, from different people of opinion about 1.5 million to bring it back up to snuff. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but we definitely need a pool. So we need to bring that one back up because the community does need it. Now, as far as infrastructure for the Mariner Center and different places, well, those can happen over time, I'm sure. But priorities first is for the Y building. There's a lot of uses that it could be used for. I'd like to see the food bank come back into the area. 
because of the, where it is right now, a lot of people are standing outside or have to take a cab to it. I'd like to see the food bank come back to the, the central community. And the Y building, well, there's plenty of room in there for other activities. So I'd like to see more thought going into what we could use it for the community and for other ideas for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Clifford Hood. YMCA is the number one top. Uh, Got your microphone clip. Thank number you. Number one top priority on our list. The town stepped up, purchased the building as a first step, and Modi walked on us on a plan to fi jointly finance uh, the YMCA. We own the building now. The uh, employees and creditors of the Y were pay the purchase price made sure that they were paid and given their severance rather than allow it to go to an insolvency situation. Um, it's going to take a lot of cajoling to get our municipal partners back to the table, but I do think that there needs to be a recreation facility operated from the current premises. I think it needs to perhaps even uh, encompass the entire county in terms of recreational services running out of that facility. Um, I know it's a, a tall order, but it can be done, and I intend to work on it when and if I get elected. Thank you. Next up, Wade Cleveland. All right. Um, this is hard to do in a minute, so let's, let's tackle a couple of things. First off, the why, the former why. Uh, what Cliff said is accurate. What, what we did is we bought that building as quickly as we could in order to make sure that uh, everybody from the YMCA was taken care of, that we could pay their bills, and so that they could leave you know, with some dignity, for one thing, but to make sure everyone was taken care of as well. We need that facility reopened. Anybody who is running who says, if I get elected, I'm going to make sure that thing gets reopened. Well, yeah, we all agree with that. That's, that's not an issue. We need to get it open. We need it to get it open quickly. We need it to be the bridge between there and the Mariner Center. Um, we do believe in the Mariner Center expansion. We think it's going to happen, but it's going to take a while. It's probably going to take 10 years. We cannot be without a pool for that long. It just can't be done. So we need to get that place open, and that's the plan. There are other ma major infrastructure projects that need to be taken care of, but I'm out of time. Thank you. Thank you. Murray Goodwin. Well, I agree with... Uh what was just said there, I, I think that's a, it's a two-prong attack. You have a, sh a short-term plan and there's a long-term plan. Short-term being a pool in the YMCA up and around and long-term Mariner Center. But I think it's also important to understand that we're a little unique here in that our infrastructure, which a lot of towns don't have to, to uh, run and maintain, is we have an international airport and a ferry terminal. And th those both have had huge amounts of money spent on them and we and and i agree with that i still believe they're an asset and not a liability so uh, there's only so much money to go around so i agree i i i'm willing to work with the uh, mariner center expansion but uh it's going to take time thank you thank you next up timothy clayton thank you um yeah our youth have nothing they have nothing in town to do. What, like, what direction are we showing them to go? Besides the YMCA, yes, we can definitely fix that up, and we can also do the Mariner Center expansion. The money is there. The money gets thrown away left and right by most of the people above us. I'll point the fingers. I'll make sure that get, this gets done quicker. We're not going to wait 10 years. I promise you that. I promise you that. I'll... I'm a very passionate person about getting what's done for this town, for our people. We have great people in this town in all walks of life. The arts, for the, the children, definitely, especially as, as a sports person, I've always focused on sports, but there are a very diverse group of people in this community, and the arts and all those outlets the children need, and um, we can definitely give it to them. I think that. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Brendan Gates. Need a pool. Uh, I know a lot of people in the town of Yarmouth do support the former YMCA building, but I've also talked to a lot of people in Argyle, and 
and the arm of the municipality who say they'd rather not support something that's only temporary and they'd rather see that money supported to the Mariner Center and that fast track. So even though I would support fixing up the YMCA, I do think that our municipal partners are pushing us more towards fast tracking in the Mariner Center. So I think that money could be put towards the Mariner Center and I would agree with Tim that we would be pushing towards fast tracking the Mariner Center over over fixing the former YMCA building. I also agree with the ferry terminal and uh, like Murray said, the airport is a great opportunity. We have some, it's been there for many years and I think we should be more, use that more for 20 what it's there for. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Don Barry. Mariner Center is a must. Uh, the renovation to it and the project set up that we need to provide for our community is a must. Uh, the problem that you run into that it's five to ten years down the road. You already mentioned about the YMCA and the and the opportunity for swimming and kids learning how to swim. When I was young, I almost drowned here at the wharf fishing, and I'm thinking it just takes one life to be saved because they have learned how to swim whether we set it up through a school program or we set it up for a community program, the YMCA needs to teach our young kids how to swim so we can save. One life is worth more than a million dollars to me. And I think by showing that, we really appreciate and put in the energy to get it back up, no matter how we need to do it, and get it running. The thing we need to do with it is that we have to make sure that our three partners are involved. We also have to get the government right down, right down to see how important it is to our community and make sure that we get it up and going. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Next up, Jim McLeod. Each year, the town dedicates between $1.5 and $2 million out of our current revenue to maintain and upgrade our infrastructure. For myself, I'm very pleased and happy that our town is proceeding with water and sewer separation. We are replacing underground infrastructure, which is well over 100 years old. This helps our treatment plant to be more efficient, more environmentally more friendly, and therefore more sustainable. Um, with the money that we can save over in the long term, we can um, invest in a more above ground infrastructure. And I com what comes to mind to make our town more beautiful is more bump outs, and there's opportunity for more grants available after we do the basic water and sewer separation. I agree with everybody everybody uh, around the table that the YMCA, my old YMCA building that I grew up in, should be energized and made to look well and alive again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, Mark Hubbard. The former YMCA building needs to reopen. It's important for downtown. It's important for the communities of Argyle, the municipality of Yarmouth, and the town of Yarmouth. But it can't close after the Mariner Center expansion. Not everybody can make it to the Mariner Center to swim. We also need, I think, wind and solar power. I like the idea of having solar farms where you can buy a solar panel, it's installed on, let's say, the old dump on the hard scratch road, and it's maintained. But by producing electricity in your name, it comes off your power bill. I think that's something we need to do, and we need mass transit to be free, zero dollars. It can sometimes come down to a senior who can't afford a prescription because of the $2 charge going and the $2 charge coming home. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Neil McKenzie. Thank you, Quinn. It's clear to me that our community desperately needs a pool uh, and we need the recreation space and services that are provided by the once former Y. Our youth need a safe place to have fun and to develop and everyone who used the former Y um, went there for different reasons, and they're all valuable. Fundraising and building a new facility will take years, so we must work with our uh, neighboring municipalities and partners on a plan to reopen 
the building on Main Street. I'm committed to finding a solution to this and support a new facility at the Mariner Center as part of an expansion plan, but we need something operational now. We cannot wait until that happens. I also think we should be investing in solar and wind projects. We've, we've proven as a, as a region that we can actually invest in sustainable, revenue-generating, uh, renewable resource projects, and I think we need to continue to do that to help us find alternative ways to generate revenue. And I also think we need to continue to do the investments that we're doing with the ferry terminal and marine access for tourism. Thank you. Thank you. Pam Mood. Well, the town isn't afraid of any infrastructure projects. We're actually a leader. Um, as the service center for the entire region, everything the town does supports 30,000 people, not just our residents. This council is fully in favor of, of a Mariner Center expansion. We've had funds in our budget for years for this, but like it or not, that's at least seven years out. Uh, the stimulus funding application and approval is two years, the design and tender is a year and a half, and the build is two years. It's not a guess, it's a fact. The town purchased the Y building because we know how important it is to the entire community. Um, and on top of you know what Cliff said ab about why we purchased it. A generation without swim lessons when we live by the sea, that's unacceptable. And if we don't train lifeguards, Who's going to work in the new pool? It just doesn't make sense. So the town is 100% committed to both of the projects, but we need our partners on board, and one did walk away. We can't ask the town taxpayers alone to pay for services for an entire region. Thanks. Thank you. Gildares. Thank you. Um, recreation infrastructure has been something I've been involved with for a very long time. In 1992, um, I, was, uh, I was told that I was wasting my time trying to get lighted ball fields. And uh, so I formed Baseball Yarmouth, and three years later we turned on the lights. The very first weekend we held a national tournament, and uh, that tournament had enough economic activity that it covered pretty much the cost to the town taxpayers. Uh, so that's how much ac economic activity was generated. That segued right into the Skate Yarmouth Association, which was formed in 95, and we spent seven years getting the Meredith Center built. The, the failure of the YMCA was actually predictable. I think they, they knew years ago that um, the building and it was on its last legs, and so they were uh, a, eager partners in the uh, Mariner Center expansion. Um, a couple of years ago, I sat in, uh, in actually in the YMCA in a meeting when the MLA and the MP both expressed that they verbal commitment towards trying to access uh, 33 and a third each towards that expansion. I think there was an opportunity missed. However, there's no sense looking back. We have to look ahead. And looking ahead, it's important, it's vital that the YMCA or that the YMCA building remain open to accommodate those people who need a pool. And um, I think we really, really need to, to work a lot quicker than seven or ten years uh, towards the Mariner Center expansion. I just don't think we can wait that long. Thank you. Uh, Heather Hatfield. Thank you. Infrastructure is a major piece of any town's responsibility. The recent closure of the YMCA has highlighted the necessity of a pool for our community. We need to work quickly to reopen the pool so swimming can be available for all our citizens. The Mariner Center expansion is vital to our community as well. This community needs and deserves a multi-purpose center that meets the needs of all the public. The economic spin-off of a multi-purpose center is vital for our economic recovery and our ability to attract and keep new people to our area. As to completion time, I would love to think it could be done in five years, but I know that the reality will be, will be longer. The main thing is that we get it started. Thank you. Charles Crosby. Thank you. I agree with everything that's been said around the table, re the downtown, the pool. The pool has to be maintained. We cannot allow our children not to have a place to go to learn how to swim. We live in a coastal community. Let's not forget that. Now the Mariner Center. I agree with Gil. I don't think we should be thinking of 10 years. I know what the mayor has said, but 
to me, you talk about the two partners that we have. We're forgetting another partner, First Nations, right across the street from the Mariner Center, practically. Why aren't we talking to them? Why aren't we bringing them on side to see what they can do to help get these things going? They can get more money than we'll ever see as a municipality. So let's get that thing going out on the Mariner Center and get it going now. Thank you. Thank you. Angie Romari. It's quite clear that the Y will be coming back. I don't believe that when the Mariner Center expansion happens that they're just going to do away with the Y. We need the Y downtown. We have to have a dense population down there. If we want to attract residents, we have to have a lively downtown core. They need to be able to travel, walk on foot. Younger generations, they enjoy that urban feel and lifestyle. So I 100% believe that that will stay implemented in the downtown area. I also feel that the Mariner Center should have diving platforms. I also feel that it should have an indoor arena, which could be used for soccer, gymnastics, cheer expos. It will give kids more options for training they can do, talents that the, they can acquire. Um, I also feel that there should be some kind of other options for high schools in this area. Um, we need some kind of high school that's going to offer trades. 10, 11, 12, if they're not academically inclined, they'll graduate grade 12 with a trade. Yarmouth desperately needs an options high school. Thank you. Byron Woodrow. Thank you. Uh, I know uh, I was on the skate park committee as well as uh, a lot of the community members and people from outside of town, so amalgamation can happen too as well because people from out of town even worked at the skate park. And it took 10 years, 11 years, and only the blessing of council let it happen. So uh, 10 years uh, is a reality, but I would say you could do it in five years if you really put your head you know, together. Um, one of the big factors right now is a pool. We do need it. Uh, as far as the gym, I think what we should be doing is getting together with people that do have gyms now and try to put them in there and, and let them pay some rent so that, that we're there we can enhance you know, our facility. Uh, and for people of all ages, not just for a few. Um, the infrastructure is old, is no different than, than our pipes underground. They have to be fixed and, and our buildings have to be fixed as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Steve Barry. Thank you. Um, opening the doors of the former Y is a priority for me. Um, a few other things, uh, the Splash Park and eventually the Mariners um, expansion is also important. I look at the recent improvements around town, uh, the Haley Road, the new water fill station, ongoing um, improvements that's going on downtown right now, and also improvements to our water and our sewer separation. Although those are issues that the town tackled alone, we must work together as a whole with other local governments on big projects or with it, they will not get done. Reaching out to our brothers and sisters in Argyle and the municipality to work together is something that will make us the strongest that we can be. Working together to strengthen our community will build our region and allow us to have things in our town that will encourage others to want to move here and stay. As, as I said earlier, often we look to fix things in the same way. Sometimes working hard to fix one thing will have a snowball effect in dealing with others. Working together as a region to build our community, investing in projects together with our citizens and, and giving our potential citizens things that will improve the quality of life are important to me. Remembering always that working together, we can accomplish much. Together we are stronger. Thank you. Thank you. James Ogden. Well, the YMCA, the YMCA, the former YMCA, is, is definitely a, a prior, priority. Uh, and to be honest with you, I talked to, to some people that worked there uh, after it was closed. I surprised it closed. I, don't, I didn't know why it closed. Like, why would it close? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I guess I was out of the loop. I uh, never really did get a, a, a straight answer or, or a, a definitive answer. Uh, but I think uh, that that building's too good, too nice uh, to, to let it go to ruin. And it's not just the pool either. It's just it's the environment, it's, it's the atmosphere, uh, the gym, you know, the weights, the treadmill, and all this kind of stuff. It's a good place. And I don't want to see a, a good place end up, you know, in a, in a bad place, if you understand what I'm saying. The Mariner Center, the Mariner Center is cool. It's got its, it's, got its stuff, you know, and, and it's impressive and things like that or whatever. Uh, but uh, 
I think the YMCA need, uh, has the potential, you know, to be just as, just as impressive as it used to be, if not if not more. So I'm in favor for the Y and for the Mariner Center. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel McIsaac. It is the town. It is town council's job to make sure we have modern infrastructure such as safe streets and sidewalks, bylaws that make sense, and affordable tax taxes that will attract businesses, families, and professional, professionals like doctors. For many years, core areas of our infrastructure were neglected like streets and water lines. When I was on town council, we turned this around and made good progress in upgrading and improving key areas. Some samples are Pleasant Street sidewalks by the new high school Milton Dam, stormwater projects on Agarl Street and Stairs Road. I supported the downtown revitalization plan and invested in town infrastructure like streets, sidewalks, and recreation services. I supported your energy sufficient LED light, street lights. These are things new businesses look for when starting in a community. Fixing streets is expensive. There was a time when the town cost shared with the province on repairs of streets like Main Street, Stairs Road. We need to get back to basics. We need to negotiate a better deal for infrastructure funding to make Yarmouth a safe and attractive place to live, visit, and do business. Thanks, Danny. Next up, Sean McClellan. Reporting on uh, town council and all the other councils, I've had the opportunity to see a lot of the things that are happening, whether it's finally getting the hall fixed at the Yarmouth Fire Department, which we, we all wanted for years. I mean, that was a great place to hang out and have parties and such. Uh, a lot of the other things that are going on, I think, like everybody here, I agree, the top priority right now is getting the former Y building reopened with that pool. And even if we get an Olympic-sized pool at Mariner Center, we've still got to keep that smaller pool, whether it's for swim lessons for little kids, aqua size for seniors, whatever. We've got to keep that around. Uh, there are a lot of other things we need, and I've been saying this for 25 years, we need a major track and field facility, not a cinder track or a dirt track. You get a major uh, track and field facility, as we've done with everything else. We build it. People come. They talk about what a great job we did of hosting these events. We've seen it with the ball fields, with Mariner Center, and all of that. So we need a lot of things like that. Thanks. Thank you. And Derek Lesser. Well, whether I get to sit at the table across the street or not, um, I'm glad I can sit at this table with all the energy people have here. Um, I think... I think it looks very optimistic that whatever happens out of this, we're gonna get the Y back. Um, and that's the most important thing right now. Uh, obviously I'm in favor of uh, the Mariner Center. Uh, growing up, I was a county kid and I swam, believe it or not, uh, at the YMCA, worked out at the YMCA. And I look at uh, people like Shannon Smith, one of the best swimmers to ever come out of Yarmouth, uh, a kid from the municipality of Argyle. So people are using them in the other spots. We need to get amalgamation done, but if they're not going to come along, we got to we got to make sure the Y is up and running. Um, and after the Mariner Center is built, the Y needs to continue to run. We need that pool downtown, as Mark has indicated. Everybody can't get to the Mariner Center, and we need an option uh, in the downtown core. Thank you. So that concludes uh, question number two for the evening, and so we'll move on to the third question. Again, I'll be coming to you in in a random order. Thanks, Quinn. So this relates to consolidation and amalgamation. Uh, as we all know, uh, COVID-19 is affecting everything, including municipal finances. A uh, lot of pressure on uh, many streams of revenue, some of them drying up even. And also the desire by a lot of municipal units not to raise taxes. So the question, will consolidation, amalgamation, be something that all three units should be considering as a way to plan ahead for the continued strength and future of the survival of this area. First up, Mark Hubbard. There are 11 municipal units in the Tri-County region. Yarmouth Town is where we live, and we are bonded to the municipality of Yarmouth and municipality of Argyle. It's my belief that living together and working together for so many years, both on the water and on the land, bonds us closely. I hope we realize working towards common 
goals is uniting us, making us a strong force. Working together with the REN, the Western Regional Enterprise Network, decisions have been made in Barrington that affect Digby, Yarmouth, and the Acadian Shores. So we are bonded. I believe amal amalgamation is actually happening now. The provincial government isn't pushing, and that's okay. We need, I feel, to develop positive and progressive partnerships with leadership from the other districts, recognizing the components that make each region unique and working in a joint fashion to ensure that important distinctions are maintained. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Charles Crosby. Well, amalgamation, that's a big word. If you look at the municipality of Aragarl, they're totally French, basically French. The municipality of Yarmouth and the town of Yarmouth are basically English. I'm in favor of amalgamation, but I don't think that we're going to see that in my day because the, the, the will is really not there. The need is there. The, real, the will isn't. I think we have to get down and sit down and talk to our partners and try to convince them what amalgamation really means for everyone, not just the town of Yarmouth, but everybody. We'll all benefit from it, but I can't honestly say that I'm going to see it in my time. I hope I'm wrong. Thank you. Next up, Angie Romer. I believe that consolidation is scary for everybody. When towns merge with counties, the council reconfigures how and where it delivers services. This should not make our residents uncomfortable. They should be on board and understand what it could do for our community. They should be informed, and we should let them know what's going on as we go through the process. Consolidation will give us a better understanding of what our community really wants from council. Saving money is only one of the many financial reasons to consolidate. It would form a larger population, base needed to compete with other municipalities. It will allow this coastal community to be reborn with a fresh start. And this is needed to build a vibrant and lively tourist economy like it once was. I am for consolidation because if the right effort is put forward, it has a good chance of ultimate success. Thank you. Next up, Gil Dares. Thank you. Well, the short answer is yes. I, I think amalgamation or consolidation is probably the sensible way to proceed. Um, I think that the difficulty is that people are nervous about change. And I think in order to convince people that this may be a good path to follow, you have to show them what the product's going to look like. You have to, um, I guess, cause, because change creates fear. So we have to show them what it's going to look like at the end of the day, and we have to be respectful of the cultural differences between the units. So I, I was a GM of the Mariner Center for several years, uh, for 10 years. I can tell you that there were numerous times that when decisions had to be made by the three different councils, uh, very often it created uh, undue delay and, uh, and confusion, and in some cases projects that didn't proceed that were probably vi valuable and viable pro projects. Um, but I think that the most important thing to do is to analyze the entire situation, take a look at it and say, okay, and then present that product to the public and say, at the end of the day, these are the benefits, this is what it's going to look like, are you in or out? And I think, you know, we can probably uh, buy public favor for it in that manner. Thank you. Thank you. Clifford Hood. The town of Yarmouth is a regional business Commercial Service and Recreation Center for the western portion of Nova Scotia. With our neighboring municipalities and the Acadia First Nation, we serve one of the most diverse populations in Nova Scotia. Our strengths are our fishery-related businesses, including harvesting, servicing, and processing, our regional hospital and retail, and business and professional services located in and around town and are also part of the region's economic engine. We need to concentrate on short-term in the short term, on completing a couple of key projects, we've talked about them tonight, the high school and the, and, the, and the public pool. 
The key challenges for the next four years are managing existing municipal obligations and future public expectations against the ongoing COVID challenge, which will cast a long shadow over the health of our people and the economy for several years to come. I want amalgamation, unification, call it what you will, of the three units. Thank you. Next up, Brennan Gates. Hi. Um, my short answer is that I wouldn't be in favor of amalgamation. Um, I know there are some success stories in Nova Scotia, Ontario, and Quebec, and there's a lot of cons with the things. And I have also done some research with the Fraser Institute, where they do some have some some success with amalgamation. They've also had some uh, not successes, where there are some towns and and Quebec and Ontario that have are actually considering de-amalgamation. So they've said they've gone through it, and there's a a lot of unexpected costs and a lot of unexpected, uh, they actually had to hire more people in the end than they did in the beginning. So I think there'd have to be more research and more study before we actually consider amalgamation. And uh, <coughs> actually we probably should work on increasing our tax base and increasing our, our industry and commercial base to bring our population to where we have a better tax base. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Derek Lesser. I think the first order of business that needs to happen when the three new councils uh, are elected, I think the three councils need to come together with the warden and mayor, um, possibly virtually, depending on the situation with COVID. Uh, but we need to come together and start talking about it right away in a friendly, positive way. Um, I think part of, the, part of the problem, I think, is that uh, the tax property taxes on the three units are different. So we're paying $1.66 per $100. Uh, the municipality of Yarmouth is paying about $1.33 on average, and municipality of Argyle is paying about $1.20. Um, we need to come up with a plan that allows the tax uh, property tax to stay similar to that, and it could be by the closer you are to the downtown core or uh, closer to the um, buildings that you're going to access, uh, the property taxes could go up. Uh, so I'm not saying to raise property taxes, but I'm saying we could try to stay with the property tax format that's in place for the three units. And I think we might be able to get them to the table in that, in that way. Thank you. Next up, Heather Hatfield. Consolidation. Progress doesn't happen in an environment where we continue to do things the same way over and over again because that's the way we've always done it. Times change. Communities change, needs change, and the world has changed. We are at a point where it is critical that the three municipalities come together to explore the pros and cons of, of consolidation. What will this look like? We have no idea. Until we sit at a table and discuss it, we won't know what it looks like. But we need to do that. I also know that we can no longer continue to operate effectively and efficiently in silos like we have been. We need to work together for progress to happen. Thank you. Daniel McIsaac. Too often, town of Yarmouth taxpayers get stuck paying more than our fair share for services and facilities. That should be cost shared by other municipal units and the provincial and federal governments. For example, I believe we need a proper pool, our our I can't pronounce the name. Anyway, we need a proper pool facility that is affordable for everyone. We must be fair, it must be fairly cost shared by all levels of government. It can't just be Yarmouth, town taxpayers bearing the load. And we can't afford to waste any more time arguing over municipal part arguing with our municipal partners about who pays for what. This is why we need a regional approach for these issues. We already share a number of services with our municipal partners, but we can't we can do more. It's time to bring common sense to talk about municipal amalgamation. Yarmouth is the best is in the best position to serve as the hub for southwestern Nova Scotia. We can be 
the leader in our region for business, health care, services for seniors and families, education, arts and culture, sports and recreation. But we only if but only if we work more closely with our partners. Thank you. Wade Cleveland. All right. Um, consolidation. Um, the question was whether everyone should consider it, the three units, and my answer is yes. And whether or not I support it or not, my answer is yes. No question. And I can do it as simply as, as a voice. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different infrastructure projects we talked about, for example. And that will not happen without the three groups together. The three municipalities have to be together for any of this to move forward. And so together, we provide a large voice, a strong voice. And if we want to grow, that's how we do it. Now, we've been through this. We've been through this a lot, actually. We went through this last year, and we were in support of that. The town was, but unfortunately, it was rejected by the other two municipalities, which was very disappointing. So when it comes right down to it, if they don't want to, we can't drag them aboard, but we do need, desperately, for one voice, somehow. And so it has to be increased cooperation in one way, shape, or form. Thank you. Pam Mood. Well, for me, consolidation isn't about saving a few dollars here and there. It's about the decision-making process. If we were consolidated, we'd be closer to a Mariner Center expansion. We'd certainly have the Y building open, I feel. It might even have not have closed in the first place. The Splash Park would be a go. We were blindsided on that one. But there's too many decisions at too many tables that are preventing all these projects from happening. So I, I brought my dice with me. And if each of these three dice is, is a municipal unit, it, it takes, I'm just going to give you the numbers, 200 and up to 216 rolls for us to get the same three answers. 216. When you consolidate um, those those odds are removed. It has one decision-making body that represents everybody in the entire region. The decision is made and the project is done. Right now, I don't think the public has any idea just how much our current system is affecting the growth of the entire region. And I'm going to say two final things. Under a consolidated unit, you pay for the services you're getting. Your taxes don't have to go up. And you're not inheriting somebody else's debt, which is great news for the town because we're good financially, because the debt of the town and the debt of Argyle combined is less than that of the municipality of Yarmouth. So we have to think about that. Facts are important because they erase fears. And I need facts, but we have to sit at the table and have these conversations. And I hope we do that. Thank you. Jim McLeod. In 1985, as a councillor for two three-year terms, I've been keenly interested in more cooperation with our two sister municipalities. We initiated discussion with the sharing of recreational services in the late 80s, and we agreed finally on an arrangement in the late 90s. As it has been hinted, we have th 23 municipal agreements, and these agreements need to be uh, organized, discussed, and finally agreed upon. And they need also to be reevaluated on a regular basis every three to five years, depending on the agreement. It's important to be thoughtful and respectful of our neighbors in Modi. Let's discover together how amalgamation can be and would be beneficial to all of our citizens. Most important, let's don't forget First Nations and how they can and should be part of our discussion. Some of the funding principles include housing services, planning, corporate services, transportation, recreation. And if there's any savings, does it enable us to access more dollars to fund, for example, our Mariner Center? Thank you. Next up, Byron Boudreau. Thank you. Uh, amalgamation, it's a must. Uh, it's just like a business. If you don't grow, you die. And the three municipal units would be able to grow. We have a regional hospital. Uh, everything we do, we're a hub. We're, we're tripling everything. 
and where we could work together. I know when I was on council, uh, I, was, I was very fortunate. I was on the police advisory board, and uh, right now, basically, it's roughly 800 people per RCMP. Now, if we amalgamate, the, the two municipal units are going to benefit. The armor's going to get hurt. So there's some things that we're going to get hurt on and some things that the municipalities are going to get hurt on. But we have to work together, and we have to have citizens' input to do it. And if that doesn't work, we have to get the provin provincial government to push this issue. And that's my issue. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Don Barry. It's important that uh, when we talk about amalgamation, we talk about that we're doing a unified group working together as one. For years, we've worked in silos, setting goals for ourselves, every community having one, two, three, four set goals. I think with amalgamation would bring those goals agreeable to all three parties together as one. I think as one, we become a greater voice. As a voice in, in looking for major projects, we have several things on the go right now. And every time you turn around, it only takes one partner to say no, and the idea is squashed. I think as a voice, we would do very well together and going together as a, uh, a, a complete team. And I think uh, once people realize that more can be done in a group rather than in silos, we'll get more done. I'm totally in favor of amalgamation. Um, I saw amalgamation through the school system, and, and, and it's, it's worked. So it's just going to have to take more partners working together at the higher levels to get it done. Thank you. Next up is uh, Sid Tab. Thank you. Algamation, that's a terrific idea. If anything, it'll give us a bigger voice for when we want to speak and talk to the politicians in Halifax or into the Canada itself. But after watching the two councils talk uh, yesterday and the day before, there's not very much support coming from them. So I don't see that actually happening in, my, in the near future. But that doesn't mean we should stop talking about it because the benefits are there. Having a larger voice is going to make it more effective. But in reality, it has to be for the benefit of all the people involved, all the communities, all the people, and everybody has to understand what the role is going to be and what the part is going to be. Till then, we have to continue on and try to work the best we can with what we have in hopes that in the future we can work towards making it a join, join together. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Murray Goodwin. Well, I, I'm in favor of amalgamation, but uh, it's going to take some work. For a good people think a good deal is if you get the lion share and, and the other guy gets nothing. A good deal is when all your partners walk away from that table feeling like they maybe didn't get everything they wanted, but they got enough that it was a good deal for them, and that'll be a challenge. The second thing is how, <clears throat> if you don't know what it looks like, how do you know you want amalgamation? So the second challenge is you have to go out and get, in a, get someone to come in and look at this. Non-biased, has, they have, it doesn't matter to them if you amalgamate or not, and give your residents information. And the third thing, this is a too big a deal for just the council. You need community involvement. They have to know what's on the table and, and what it's going to look like to them and that'll be a challenge. So for amalgamation to work, it's going to take a lot of time, and it's going to take work. Thank you. Next up is Steve Barry. Thank you. As I said in my last question, together we are stronger. I voted in favor of amalgamation, and during that time, one of the things I said is it's about what we all gain, not about what we all lose. As Murray just mentioned, a good deal is when we all walk away from the table and we get a little. Maybe have to give a little bit up, but still. I look forward to exploring this possibility again. And while being sure that our friends in Argyle and the municipality are taken care of also. I listened to the last couple nights during the forum, and I know there is some uh, dissatisfaction with it, but I think together, if we retake a look, looking deeply into this and see what we can gain, uh, I think at the end of the day that it makes us all stronger. Uh, much work needs to be done to work towards amalgamation. 
looking deeply into all aspects is something that we owe our region to build up. 25,000 people working together is a strong force that allow us to, th to thrive. We can either make this choice on our own now working together, or we can wait and be forced by the provincial government. I'm thankful for those with forward thinking who see the importance of this and will work hard to make our region, not just the town, the best place to be. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Sean McClellan. This is another topic where I was lucky enough to be uh, a reporter in the room when all three councils were discussing it, and uh, I was even in the, uh, uh, the room in Tuscott when it was voted down, and the biggest concern was that there were certain communities that felt that they were going to get stepped all over and squashed and we cannot force them to come into it. Anybody that talks to longtime residents up in what's now called HRM, if they've lived there for a number of years, they do not live in HRM and they never will. They live in Dartmouth or Coal Harbor or Lower Sackville. Queens County did it right, where they all got together, sat down, convinced each other what was good for them, and they got together and formed their own municipality. We've got to do it that way. We've got to convince them that we're not going to destroy this and that, that we all want to work together. And it may take a few years to do it. I'd rather see that than have the government come in and say, no, you people are all getting together and being on one council and that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Next up is Timothy Clayton. Um, as an athlete growing up, um, I believe in working together, uh, strength and unity in numbers. Um, if everybody's pulling in the same direction, working towards the same goal, uh, things are going to go a lot smoother. Um, I've talked to a lot of friends in town, outside of town, all the, in all the districts. Some are for, some are against. Um, I mean, I think the big reason is they don't want, to pay, they don't want taxes to go up for some things that they're not going to use. Um, I'm going to use a, an example when we built the Mariner Center. So wasn't that supposed to be a 2,500 seat bowl arena? And we cut back, cut back, cut back. And now, and then we put another expansion. We just, if we would start doing things right the first time, build it right, and we build it and they will come. Look, we built the arena. The Mariners came up the next year. I never would have played Junior A if they would have came to town. I'm grateful for that, for the Mariner Center and that. But uh, I know Gil mentioned the baseball fields. Those baseball lights haven't worked in almost forever, and we haven't used them for the last two years because the bulbs burned out. They're not proper baseball lights. Um, we got to do things right the first time, and uh, maybe we'll make our other friends happy. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Neil McKenzie. Thank you. I'd like to talk about the concept of how we win when we work together. So when I think about tourism and how tourism was once you know, done through silos. Our, our region was done. Uh, we mar each each municipality marketed themselves and tried to do it that way. That was around 2010 and before. And then we formed the organization that I work for now, Yasta. Yasta and the the uh, municipalities took a regional approach. They said we're going to market tourism as a destination because we know that visitors don't see imaginary lines. They don't see the difference between. Municipality of Yarmouth, the town of Yarmouth, the municipality of Argyle, etc. They just see a destination and that's where they want to go. And when we did it regionally, we, we went from $31 million in 2010 in tourism receipts to 2017, it was approximately $71 million. And that's just one example of what happens when we work together. And when we don't work together, we get examples of missed opportunities or lost, uh, lost uh, infrastructure like the YMCA or stalled projects like the Mariner Center. So I'm in fully support of working together, and I think you have plenty of examples of when we do that, how we, how we can all achieve. Thanks. Thank you. And wrapping up, uh, question number three is James Ogden. I had a friend one time. I went to his house. He had a magazine, and I asked him if I could have it. He said, I threw it in the garbage. I said, well, can I get it? He said, well, if you want to pick through the garbage, he said, get it, you know. So I picked through the garbage, and I got it. Brushed off the potato peelings, whatever the case was. Started walking out, and he had the nerve to look at me later and say, when you're done with that magazine, I want it back. I said, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Just make me pick through that garbage. Now you want it back. Why? Because at the time, it wasn't good to him. You see what I'm saying? When it comes to amalgamation, 
The, the real problem, if we, run, if we want to get down to it, the real problem is sometimes, sometimes it can be ego. It can be pride. You can offer somebody a million dollars for something and, and no, no, don't want it. You know, what the case may, whatever the case may be. We need to vote people in who, who we know, we know don't have any hidden agendas, no back, whatever the case may be, right? What's good? What's good for the people? Are we willing to go, oh, you know, okay, man, I, it's not what I want, but it's good for the people and, and whatever. And my time's up, but that's all I had to say. Thank you, James. So that wraps up the third question for this evening. I want to thank all the candidates who've uh, been able to express their opinions. Given the fact that we uh, have uh, specific mayoral candidates, we have a bonus question, I guess, if you want to call it that, uh, specifically for the three uh, mayoral candidates. Uh, go ahead, Gary. Thank you very much. So uh, for our mayoralty candidates, uh, this uh, topic relates to community engagement, uh, which can certainly uh, improve transparency. So the question I have is very simple uh, for the three of you. How would you enhance the process of community engagement? And again, in random order, Angie Romard. Well, how do we engage communities? We start off with being transparent. As important as defining our community is, it may be equally important to be transparent and publicly share. I will be offering a transparent seat in office to residents. I will be offering to shape our projects in positive ways that will build trust within our community. I want us to be in all hands in council. This will then contribute to better outcomes. I would like to craft a range of meaningful ways to identify issues, gather local knowledge, and explore ideas and solutions together. I want to, I will go head to head with the provincial and federal governments until they are aware of the issues that are here and that have been going on into our community so we can pro provide better services within our community to our residents. Thank you. Next up, Charles Crosby. This isn't new to me. I started when I was mayor. I walked Main Street, one side down and one side up every day. Stopped in the stores and talked to the, the people in the stores, the owners, talked to the, the people that were in there buying. I went to the schools. I talked to the classes individually. I started with small children, primary, and worked up to grade 12. That is how you get people involved, by being there, being out there, and being seen. Walk the streets, talk to people, take the criticism, just as well as taking the things that are good for you. You have to get the people involved. I've been to every senior's home. I played you-know-who for them every year. We had a Christmas party, and I would attend. <laughs> so I know how to get the community together. I know how to make it work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's okay. We'll get it afterwards. Uh, Pam Mood. Thank you. I, I'm a huge believer in community looking after community, and, and I don't think anybody does it like Yarmouth. Uh, when I was first elected, uh, everybody remembers we were at rock bottom because of the ferry and everything else that was going on. I reached out to the community with the All Hands on Deck initiative. Uh, somebody told me, yeah, set up 30 chairs, and I said, set up 400. I believe in this community enough to know that they'll show up. Over a 1,000 people signed up from that initiative to take care of each other and the community, and they're still doing it today. Gosh, I love this place. I love this place. When people reached out, and I, I talked to people every single day, like Charles, on the street, on the phone, you know, social media, people reached out to me to say, you know what, Mayor, I can pay for my power of food. I, I can't do both. I can pay for medication or put food on the table. I set up the 100 Meals program right away. The community has served close to 20,000 meals. You have a mayor that sees the issues and sees them fixed. Then together, we make it work. You have to look after each other, and that's exactly what this community does. Housing and mental health are issues that my task team is taking on. They're provincially mandated, but I have a, a great team of community volunteers that do that. And, and I'll say this to finish up. We don't always have to agree. And nobody would disagree that I've taken some hits over the years. It's okay. 
but it's because I won't ever, ever give you a political, political answer or something that I think you want to hear. You will always get the truth from me. In today's world, sometimes the truth hurts, but I love this community too much to do anything else. Public engagement is necessary, and I also know that pe people are really looking for leadership. In four years, a council will make roughly 650 decisions. You elect us to make those decisions, so we need people at the table who have the courage to make the tough ones and move this community forward. I just believe in this community so much. Thank you. Thank you. So that wraps up on the question and answer segment. So we'll have closing comments from each of the candidates. We'll go in reverse order. Uh, did, did James Ogden leave? Oh, okay. I think he just might have stepped out for a second. But we'll start with Sid. We'll go to Jim. And then we'll come back to James if we have a, a second afterwards. Go ahead, Sid. Okay. I want to thank the Yarmouth Chamber of Commerce for hosting this. It gives us an opportunity to express some of our ideas. I'm sure with... I speak for everybody. We have a lot more to do in this town. There's a lot of problems to be solved and fixed. I'm great to, grateful to see so many qualified people here that are going to be running. And I hope to be involved in the future of what goes on in this town. I want you to understand I'm here to work. And I make this commitment to you and to everybody here that if I can do anything to help, and if you have a desire to want me to help, I will be there, win or lose. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. Jim? I am a futurist. As a member of the Industrial Commission, Chairman of the PAC, and Waterfront Committees, it's important to be constantly looking ahead. Maintaining the status quo is not an option in today's world. Our town and sister municipalities were here before me and will be here after I'm no longer a councillor. I just want to leave our town and municipalities better off. In spite of my age, I'm still energized as much as I was when I was a major shareholder in my pharmacy. I enjoy the meetings and discussions about the many issues which occur. These, the three topics presented by our chamber are appropriate for our time, thanks to the chamber. However, over a period of four years, as Pam has mentioned, we'll be dealing with oh, probably 600 plus agenda items. I want the new council and the mayor to have, a good, have good discussions on all agenda items and be respectful of each other's views, even though we may not always agree on everything. I'm looking forward to the best voter turnout ever in our current, select, in our current election, so please don't disappoint me when I'm hoping for a 77.7% .7 turnout. <laughs> Okay, James, we'll come back to you, and then we'll go to Sean. Oh, okay. So one thing, if you know me at all, one thing uh, people say about me is that James is he's an honest guy. James is very honest, you know. And, uh, and I say, you know, I am honest. I like to be honest. But I know honest people that don't work. And I know honest people that don't have, you know, uh, any kind of ethic in terms of going out there and, and, and doing what, what needs to be done. And uh, yeah, I'm honest, but but and sometimes that scares people. It really does, right? Uh, but it shouldn't scare. If, if you're honest, it shouldn't scare you know uh, scare you. So what I'm saying is this: what you see is what you get, and more. If you vote for me, I will. We will work together. We'll get the job done, uh, or at least I'll do my best. And you can be guaranteed on that. I'll do my best uh, to get the job done. And I'm excited, like I really, really am. And like I said, for 37, almost 40 years. I fought uh, and I've worked for, with people from mental illness to whatever the case may be, and I'm looking forward to broadening my spectrum. All right. Thank you. Thank you, James. Sean. When I first moved here in 1989 to uh, take up a job at uh, CJLS, it wasn't my first time here. I used to come in with the Naval Reserves a lot, and we'd dock on the waterfront and spend a lot of money in different places here, usually at night. But uh, I moved here, and one of the first questions I got from somebody is, why would you move from the city to here? Well, in the city, I couldn't even tell you what my next-door neighbor's uh, name was. Now I know half the people on my street and, uh, you know, go to a Mariners game, and it's as much a social event as anything else. Same thing with a lot of the other events that I go to. I've been lucky enough whether through the radio station or on my own, to uh, be on a lot of committees and uh, help with different boards and to emcee a lot of events where I've gotten to meet an awful lot of people and had a great time. And I've seen 
how Yarmouth and the Yarmouth County always puts on such a great event, whether it's the National Old Timers Baseball or a hockey game or a kids uh, tournament that's going on. That's why I came here and that's why I've stayed here. Thanks. Thank you. Neil McKenzie. Thank you. Well, I would also like to echo everyone's comments in thanking the Chamber of Commerce and Quinn and Gary for hosting us this evening. Thank you very much for your work. Uh, once again, my name is Neil McKenzie, and I am uh, asking you for your support in the municipal election. Uh, I'm committed to finding solutions, and I'm also uh, what I would consider as a regionalist. I see the value of doing things together with our partnering municipalities. I see that the only way we're going to do that is if we actually find out what their priorities are too and try to figure out ways how we can actually work together. Um, if we continue to uh, blame each other for issues that are impacting our entire community, all we'll end up doing is with, end up ending up with the same results. So I really hope this council, uh, whichever, whoever it ends up being, um, can really think that way. And uh, I think if that happens, we'll move forward. If anyone is interested in more information about my campaign, they can look me up on Facebook or they can find me at mckenzieforcouncil.ca and uh, you can read about more things uh, that I'm uh, are in my platform. So thank you very much. Nice hearing from everybody tonight and uh, good luck everyone. Thank you. Daniel McIsaac. Thank, uh, thank you, uh, Daniel McIsaac, once again. Real experience counts now more than ever. We need to get back to basics and bring common sense to town council. My vi vision for Yarmouth is a town where seniors and families can live in affordable, safe, clean neighborhoods and good streets and sidewalks. My vision, visions include creating a, an attractive business climate where new and existing businesses can thrive. As an owner of a small business, I believe we all need to support local businesses whenever possible. This is why I had all my signs and brochures printed right here in Yarmouth. People have six votes for council. I may not be your first choice, but I ask you for one of your six votes. You can count on me to always stand up, speak out, and say what's on my mind on your behalf of the people of Yarmouth. Thank you. Thank you. Derek Lesser. I want our full community to be better. We have had a lot of sore on our community in the last few years, and we need to provide more to our residents, especially in terms of mental health. A boost to the economy can lift a community, and we need to make the right connections around the world to find people that want to invest in everything we have to offer. My current job will have me traveling around the world to various countries to promote our province to bring international students here. There's a reason why this is an easy sell to students. I currently work with a lot of immigrant families, and it's impressive how outsiders view our area. Once our full community's mindset mimics those of the newcomers, we will prosper more than we ever have. Although I believe my skill set would serve well as a counselor, I'm happy with the list of counselor, or candidates, although I would have liked to see more females. Uh, I would encourage everyone to take the time to vote. Thank you to Quinn and Gary, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Rick and Tracy, Eastlink, Ocean Blue, Rotary Club of Yarmouth, Town of Yarmouth, and the Nova Scotia Association of Realtors for sponsoring this event so the residents will get a quick glimpse of what we offer. It's been an honor and good luck. Thank you. Mark Hubbard. I'm going to go through my closings in point form, and I need you to contact me to get the full scoop. One minute doesn't explain what I will do for you when I am elected. I've had 33 years successfully negotiating with hundreds of national and international suppliers in my retail career. Volunteered at Lake Milo 13 plus years, I'm a founder of the Lake Milo Canoe Club Society, a co-founder of the Children's Food Kitchen of Yarmouth, inclusive, positive attitude in everything I do, and I see projects completed start to finish. Go to Mark Hubbard for Yarmouth Town Council on Facebook, email me at markhubbard at eastlink.ca, or come visit me at Runner's Attic anytime. The door's always open. Thank you. Thank you. Clifford Hood. So I've been the workhorse of this council. <laughs> I misspoke earlier. I, I said I had eight committees. I've got nine. Because when Sandy got sick, I picked up her load and carried it. And I've made the meetings and done the work. And here's what you need to know, every one of you. 
great ideas are on the table here, but you need to get out and vote for me. Your people need to vote for me because you won't have a chance on this council without my experience and background. Really, that's all I got to say. Done the work, <laughs> ready to serve. Gary, so great to see you because you know what was going on. I'm a, Gary, <laughs> you know, you, we were at the hospital together with my wife and him. Uh, I'm just so overwhelmed here to see you. Good for you, Quinn. Thank you. Thank you. Angie Romard. If anything from this evening, I hope that you have learned that I am a person of strength. I will use my strength and my voice to stand up and defend every resident in this community. My voice will be loud to address issues mattering most to the residents and what they want to see done. 2020 has been a roller coaster of a year, and I predict that this will affect Yarmouth for 2021 and 2022. We need long-term plan to ensure Yarmouth's self-preservation. Focus is needed on mental health, addictions, recovery, housing, business development, and our youth. Our youth are, are our future. We need to work for them to ensure they enjoy a prosperous one as well. Our community faces many challenges in various areas. If you vote for me, I will make sure that I stay focused and I will work towards a solution so that the children don't suffer. Thank you. Pam Mood, 60 seconds. Yep. Yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks to everyone that's watching online and for everybody that put your name on the ballot. It takes courage to do that. There's no greater calling than to serve others. Uh, it's a huge learning curve, and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Murray Goodwin, um, who's here at the table, for helping me as a newbie through those first four years. My CAO, that was just amazing a, as well. Um, you know what? What the town needs right now, we've hit COVID. It's not going to get any easier, and I know that. Uh, what the town needs more than anything is leadership that's connected to each of you and to the province and the federal governments, a leader that's doing that work now. This isn't a game, and neither is our future. In the town of Yarmouth, the mayor is the person that you choose to lead an $85 million company. The person you choose has to be able to build relationships with prime ministers and with those in the community that, is, that are marginalized, and, and they're equally as important. It's been a privilege for me to do this for you for the past eight years. Yarmouth's on the map, and people are listening. I love that you visit my office, call me, and send me messages when you have any kind of concern. Keep doing that. It's what the community is all about. So from October 8th to the 17th, we get to vote. And I'd be honored and humbled if you would re-elect your mayor so we can continue this work together. And for more information, pammood.com. Thanks for a great night, everyone. Thank you, Mayor. Charles Crosby. Well, I can tell you from firsthand, I have the leadership ability. I learned that the hard way. I served in Her Majesty's services in the Army. That's where I learned my trade. I know how to lead. I know what a leader has to do. He doesn't have to be the boss. He has to make sure everybody follows <laughs> the way, the way to do things. That's how I lead. I can tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen sitting around this table, whoever gets elected to the town council, this town's going to be in good hands. Thank you. Thank you. Heather Hatfield. Hi. First, I would like to thank uh, all of you for putting your names out forward um, for um, mayor or council. I think it takes courage. Uh, and it shows a true interest in our community. So I think it's really great to see this many people sitting here tonight. Um, I chose the slogan, building a better community, or um, building a better tomorrow, uh, to run my campaign under. And I did that because my heart and my passion has always been in moving our town forward. We are now faced with issues like consolidation, the Mariner Center's expansion, the closing of the Y, and these will, this will challenge us to be visionary and courageous in planning for a better tomorrow. I encourage and beg you all to take the time to vote 
and I would love to be your voice at the table come October 17th. Thank you. Mary Goodwin. <clears throat> well, I envy uh, Mary Moo because she's probably one of the best public speakers I've ever heard, and I'm probably the worst. So I'll never dazzle you with brilliant oratory, but there's four counselors in this room and a mayor that are can vouch that I work hard, I'm honest, I don't waste a lot of words, and I get to the point. I don't miss meetings. In eight years, I never missed a council meeting. In eight years, I never missed a meeting with the Industrial Commission or the four years I was on the airport. So uh, I, I'm willing to do that for the town also. Uh, if you think I'd be an asset to the town, then I, pr I appreciate you. Oh, I love the town. I have four daughters here who married who are raising families. I have an investment in the future of Yarmouth, and that is why I put my name forward. Thank you. Thank you. Brendan Gates. Uh, in closing, I'd like to say that uh, I'm very passionate about my answers, but also I'm humble enough to, to see other people's opinion, and if I know their opinion and it's uh, a valid point, then I'm willing to change my decision. But I'm still passionate about what I believe in, and I I really want to, want to make sure that point was heard. And uh, I've always stood for the underdog, and I've always voted for someone. I've never voted for someone who's always, always won in, a, in a politics. And uh, I've always stood up for what I believed in morally, and I've always I've lost friends. I've lost jobs over what I believed in and what is right and what is honest. So if you vote for me, I'm going to vote for what is, what is true, what is honest, and uh, my track record proves that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Gil Dares. Thank you. Well, offering for counsel has been a humbling experience, but it's also been an opportunity to bring attention to the challenges facing our community. I've welcomed that opportunity to raise awareness of the issues such as child poverty and affordable housing that I believe need to be addressed in order to build a healthy community. One where we take care of each other and look to the future with optimism. I want to thank all of you who have taken the time to share, speak to me over this last two or three weeks and share your thoughts and opinions during the campaign. I've listened, I will continue to listen as the election draws clear, nearer and in the, days to, in the years to come. While I appreciate the format for tonight, um, one minute is hardly enough to answer the questions that were asked. As you cast your votes in the coming weeks, I urge you to take the time to learn about the candidates and make informed choices. Thank you. Thank you. Wade Cleveland. Okay, so. Uh, three things. First off, to those who are watching, thank you so much. Um, and I would very much like to encourage everyone to get out there and vote. It's easy to do. Telephone, um, computer, whatever way you want to do it, it's easy. So please vote. Let's get a high turnout. And yes, please, learn more, because it's pretty hard to jam stuff into a minute. I know I had a really hard time with that. So for me personally, if you want to learn more about what I'm up to, um, all you have to do is follow me on Facebook. There's a Facebook page there. There's videos there. I'm going to have a couple of question and answer sessions if anybody wants to do it. So that's there. And I would love to have your support on the 17th of October or any time between then and now. It starts on the 8th. Um, Gary, Quinn, it was a pleasure to the uh, uh, chamber and everybody. Thank you very much for what you did. It is really, really helpful. And to all, everyone here, a lot of people are going to lose. Because there's only six spots, all right? So a lot of people are going to lose. But don't take that as a loss. Please, you know, we need people. We need people to be engaged. There's more to being a part of this community than being in council. And so please, there are committees. There are many things that are going on in and about the community. If you want to serve, boy, there's some spots for you. And uh, so to everyone, thank you so much. Thank you, Wade. Timothy Clayton. Uh, thank you everyone tonight for setting this up and having us all here. Um, this is my first time running for council. Um, it's a very new to me process, um, but I'm here to promise you I'm here to ready for a challenge and ready to do what's right for the people of this town. Um, I, like I say I grew up here my whole life. I know the town. I know what goes on in and out of here. Like, if you, if you want to know what goes on at a company, you don't ask the CEO. He's not going to give you a straight answer. You've got to talk to the employees to find out what really goes on. So that's what I've been doing. I know what goes on in this town, how it works. Uh, my friends are 
and the RCMP, doctors, lawyers, teachers. I've been talking to all different aspects, uh, especially the RCMP. We've got to clean this town up. Uh, there's a lot of issues there. Um, also, the drug problem is more of a public health issue, I think, than a criminal issue. Like, uh, these people uh, are in hard times, and um, we're going to try to help help those people. So I'm here to to help uh, to do whatever it takes for Yarmouth and surrounding areas to get the job done to help everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Byron Boudreau. Thank you. Uh, quality is a result of teamwork, and I'm a team player. Uh, I can tell you one thing right now. I love this town. Uh, our, our, it's a beautiful town. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I ran, and I, I was a su successful to get in for three terms. I enjoyed my time when I was serving the citizens of town, and I would ask the citizens to uh, uh, support me again. Uh, one of the things I would like to do is, uh, if I do get on, is to uh, put in a senior safety coordinator. Seniors are very important in our town, and we do not have one. Most towns in Nova Scotia, all of Nova Scotia that I talk to, have a senior safety coordinator. We do not, and we're supposed to be a hub town. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, my number is 740-5242. I'm not a guy that's on Facebook, believe me. I, got, I work too many hours out of a day to get on Facebook. And thank you for everybody for putting this on, and uh, all success for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Berry. Thank you. I'm thankful for all the answers given tonight. We're lucky to have so many people wanting to get involved in our community. What I ask of everyone here tonight is, regardless of the outcome of the election, that you all stay involved. We have public advisory councils that serve our citizens to give them a direct voice into things that councils do. There are many other groups and committees around that provide services to our public that could use more volunteers as well. And I'm thankful to be a part of those, as are many other people who sit here tonight. Um, my work at the high school for over 15 years, working with our youth, allows me to have the insight needed to bring their voice to the table. I was very happy in the last election to sign up many new voters who supported me. I am the founding mem one of the founding members of the J Strong Fund, a local charity that has raised over $200,000 in its first few years, and all this money has been given back to our community support to support our youth with, with the cost of sports. Our group has shut down Main Street to put on a street hockey tournament. We, won run we run one of the best tournaments around, and I hope to continue to build on this if you will give me a chance bringing us all together to make our town the best place to be. Thank you to the Chamber for putting this on. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Quinn, um, for letting us get our voices out to the public. A vote for me is a vote for the people, and I will continue to work to make sure our town is the best place to be. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Steve Berry, or Don Berry, sorry. Thank you, Gwen and, and Gary. Uh, i also like to thank the Chamber. I've listened and learned from our council I've learned and listened from our community. I am only one voice, but I am a team player. I'm hardworking. Many things have been done when we start looking at our big plan. We've had a ball, we've had a dog park, we've had a sewer separation, fire hall renovation, accessible playgrounds, ferries, wharf repair, turbines, you name it, we've accomplished over a hundred things. Many people look at the negative things that we've had. Yes, we've had three or four issues that have come across our plate that we couldn't nail down together as a group. So I think that needs to be done. My main concern is that I have children out there, and I know you have grandchildren out there that live all across the world. I want them to come home. I want them to have an opportunity here where they can be as proud as I am of Yarmouth. I think we've done a very good job of trying to promote our area, and we've done an excellent job with tourism and stuff like that just to promote and bring up. I think there's people dying to get into our community. We just need to start providing some work opportunities. I think our ferry uh, needs to be one that, unfortunately, needs to be one that it meets our needs, and I'm not sure if we're there yet. My whole life I've lived here, from a baby all the way to 63 years. I love this community. I'm going nowhere. I know people put me in, I think, for my first time running in politics because they knew that I was a person that would speak up 
and take their problems or issues right to the table. Sometimes, because I'm one voice, I don't manage to get things done. But, however, I make sure that your voice is heard. I'm hoping that on election day that you include me as one of the six people that make it to council. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don. And thank you, everybody, for this evening, all your answers and, uh, and commentary for our questions. And I'm going to give uh, Gary, actually, the last word. Oh, no. Or words. <laughs> words. Uh, <laughs> uh, again, thank you very much to the candidates uh, who are running for mayoralty office and council for the town of Yarmouth. Thanks to all the candidates uh, from the municipality of the district of Argyle and the municipality of the district of Yarmouth. It's, it's been great. It makes me so proud uh, to see all the passion from, from everyone who is, is running to, to live in this, uh, this part of the province. Okay, my speech is over. Uh, so I uh, want to thank, of course, the Yarmouth and Area Chamber of Commerce, uh, who, are the, uh, who were the presenters of these three forums, and our sponsors, the Nova Scotia Association of Realtors and the Yarmouth Rotary Club. And a special thanks to uh, my buddy, my friend, and uh, co-moderator, Quinn. Uh, he did a lot of the legwork, no pun intended, and uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Holly, me, yeah, you got that, did you? And, uh, <laughs> I made him laugh, yes. and uh, I appreciate it very much. And uh, so, a lot of people um, uh, are not uh, uh, connected to the internet uh, through uh, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, so these uh, uh, forums can be viewed uh, through Eastlink Community Television. They're going to uh, air all three on Saturday, October the 10th, on Channel 10 uh, in the Tri-Counties. The municipality of Yarmouth will air at 1 p.m., the municipality of Argyle at 3.30, and the town of Yarmouth at 5 p.m. Again, that's on Eastland Community TV, October the 10th on Channel 10. And uh, Eastland Community TV also wants to thank the Yarmouth and Area of Chamber of Commerce for providing these uh, forums and broadcasts. Be patient, I'm almost done. Uh, again, that uh, just to reiterate what many of the candidates uh, have said in these forums, please uh, get out and vote. If you're eligible to vote, uh, use that that sacred right that, that we all have to, to get out and, and vote. Uh, as my father used to say, you, you know, if you want to complain, you better vote. So please get out and exercise uh, your right to vote. So no matter where you live, whether in the town or Argyle or the municipality of Yarmouth, uh, it's, uh, it's very easy to vote. Of course, it's e-voting, so you can vote on your device. You can vote by phone uh, or in the town of Yarmouth, at least. You can also vote in person. COVID restrictions apply, of course. And you can go to uh, uh, just to the town hall and uh, cast your vote there. So for specific instructions, simply go on the Facebook pages or uh, websites of your particular municipality. Uh, uh, your municipality or town, all the information is there. There's also uh, contact information, phone numbers, and uh, staff are very, very helpful. And again, for Quinn and uh, everyone else, uh, thank you all very much, and thank you for watching. Thank you.